Welcome to Camarillo United Methodist Church. This morning, we are here live with you through this YouTube channel, and we are very excited to present to you for the first time our new pastor, Reverend Elbert Kim, whom you will have the chance to see and listen to, and he will answer a couple of questions that are being asked by our very own leadership who are present in this building with us. But before we get to any of all those things, we have a couple of announcements for you, so mark your calendars. You may have seen this in the emails of the connections. Um, on Saturday, July the 18th at 8 p.m., we have a family night at the drive-in. You may ask yourself, where's the drive-in? It's our parking lot right here. So read all the details in the connections. Just know Saturday, July the 18th at 8 p.m. in our very own parking lot, we will feature the film, The Sandlot, which is family friendly. Bring all the kids. We recommend you stay in your cars. Again, all the details are in our connections, but mark your calendars already. Uh, that's Saturday, July the 18th at 8 p.m. Um, another announcement, the flowers that are on the altar this morning are courtesy of Reverend Lee Truman and Dr. Ruth Truman and are meant as a welcome gift for Reverend Kim. So I guess he gets to take him home at the end of the day. <laughs> for this and more announcements, please we invite you to check the connections via email. And if you have no way of checking emails at home, please give us a call. We can give you a, print of, uh, a, a, a printed copy of this announcement and you can always just pick him up at the office or we can mail you one, but just call the office. We'll set you up with a copy of the connections. Hey, Christy, what you doing? Good morning, Pam. Good morning. Well, as you know, this is Pastor Albert's first Sunday with us. Yes. And I've been trying to think of ideas of how to introduce him to the children of youth and to welcome him here to CUMC. But things are kind of weird right now, and I'm not really sure how to do that with the kids at home and us here. Yeah, yeah. Well, what would you come up with so far? Well, let's see. Um, normally, on the first Sunday, we would introduce the pastor. Hello, this is Pastor Albert. And then during the welcoming time, everybody could shake hands. <laughs> okay, okay. Shake, shake hands. hands. All right, shake hands. Yeah, that's not going to work. With no. the governor's social distancing rules, I think shaking hands is not going to work. No, no. What, what else do you have? Well, there's a little more casual approach mm -hmm. of doing the high fives. Ah, oh, perfect. Right, high fives. Okay. Are you ready? Go. Up, uh, down low. <laughs> Still no? Not even a knuckle bar. Yeah. With six feet apart, we can't even touch each other. No, so no. That's just not no. working either. Okay, number three. Well, this is a little bit more athletic version, the chest hall, you know, like okay. after a football game. Shall we try that? Oh, right. sure. Pastor Elbert. Woo, 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 woo. Oh, I, yeah, that's kind of wrong on so <laughs> many levels. <laughs> that one was very uncomfortable. I think yeah. we'll have to mark that one up. Yeah, I don't think so. So you see my problem. Yeah. The things that we usually do, we can't, and uh, we can't even have a potluck. Not unless they're famous for doing potlucks for every occasion. <laughs> I know, I can't believe it. Okay, we just have to get creative. We can do this. How about we send him a selfie? Okay. Ready? Yep. All right, I'm gonna take the picture now. Smile. Got it. Sent. That's a good idea. I got it! Wow, he got it already! Well, that was very quick and very easy. What else can we do? Hmm, I suppose. I could send him an email. That's a good idea. Okay. Dear Pastor Albert, my name is Christy. I was born in Michigan. After I was born, I learned to walk. No, that's wrong. Um, First, I learned to crawl. Christy, I learned to. I think that's going to be a little too long. Too much information? Too much information. Okay, how about just, dear Pastor Albert, hi. That sounds good. Okay. Send that one. Send. Well, that was quick and easy. Any other suggestions? Uh, <coughs> texting? We could send a text? Yes, yes, we could send a text. We've already sent a selfie, but you could send a text. And there's his number <laughs> and his email. I just happen to have those with me. You may want to close up on it. <laughs> so, so, text, 
selfies. Selfies will be especially helpful because aren't you doing a church directory? We're putting together a new church directory, and if you send your pictures into the church office, I can put them in the directory and print them for Pastor Albert, and he will be able to get to know all your faces. That's great. Well, thank you, Pam. I'm feeling much better that even though we're far apart, we can still be a church family during these crazy times, and we can still be here to support each other and, and love each Kim. other and welcome the Kim family. That's right. And so welcome to Pastor Albert and to Grace and Nathaniel and Daniel. We look forward to seeing them in person. Shall we say a prayer? Let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for old friends and new friends. Thank you for good memories and new adventures. Thank you for our church family, even when we can't be together in person. Help us to be together in spirit. Help us to be creative in finding ways to be welcoming and inclusive. And supportive and kind. And help us to love others as you have loved us. Amen. Amen. Arise and Shine, a poem by Winsala Botemi. Arise and shine, for your light has come, shoveling brightness on every road. When your bone marrow come to meet the ground in a war for soul, rise, then shine. When the road taken come to confusion, then divide, draw out the map of faith, Steer the wheel, rise, then shine. When your feet slip into the mire of desperation and the grist no longer come to the mill, rise, then shine. If you find yourself between the devil and the Red Sea, Pharaoh's soldiers racing, crave for Moses' rod, rise, then shine. When the ocean go riled to real life out of you, breathe in faith and hope, then rise and shine. Arise and shine for hope and faith are flag off. Vote them in your heart. Rise, then shine. Arise and shine for the Lord's palm is stretched forth 
clamber onto it, rise, then shine. Let us all now join in prayer. Lord, we remember our friends Joan and Tom Farragher, whom this week they lost their granddaughter Kristen. Lord, provide comfort. We remember Linda Sharp and Judy Henry on their battle with cancer. Lord, bring about health. We remember Pat Roth, Marilyn Farwell, Rod Preston, and David Fall in their recoveries, Lord, strengthen them. We rejoice in Roger Cox and Randy Eccles' continued successful recovery. Thanks be to God. Through the uncertainty of our present times, God, be with us. And Lord, may we also remember to claim for ourselves, not just ours that we know, but also the tired, the poor, those who are so oppressed that they can't breathe, the wretched, the refused, the homeless, the tempest-tossed, the hungry, the thirsty, the immigrant, the destitute, the prisoner, and the sick. 
For inasmuch as we fail to love one of the least of these, Lord, we fail to love our very own Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And in the words of Christ, we offer ourselves in the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. From the abundance of our hearts, we give for the ongoing ministry of our church. We invite you to continue to support online at our website, www.cam umc.org. Again, that's www.cam, sorry, uh, uh, dash umc.org, not slash dash. Under the tab of giving, you will find a way to donate online. Or if you want to send physical donations, you can always send them to the office. Just make sure those checks are made payable to Camarillo United Methodist Church. Our scripture lesson today is from Psalm 145, verses 8 through 14. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his, his compassion is over all his works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your godly ones shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power, to make known to people his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures all throughout generations. The Lord upholds all who fail and raises up all who are bowed down. Okay, so Connie's going to start us off. We know that you are a proud husband and dad. Please tell us about your family. Sure. Love to tell about my family. So um, my wife's name is Grace, and we have two boys, uh, Nathaniel and Daniel. Well, he goes by Nate now. Uh, we actually gave him a long name, Nathaniel, has like nine or ten letters long. Um, but we gave him a long name so that he can choose how he wants to be called later in life. And so now he goes by Nate. So uh, our two boys, Nate and Daniel. Nate is in um, first year of college, or so we thought. I mean, we sent him off to college, and uh, three quarters of the way, he came back home. And so, um, but he's, uh, he's completed his first year, and he's enjoying um, the summer right now. And our second uh, son, Daniel, is, uh, will be entering high school in the fall. However high school will look like, we don't know yet, but uh, that is the plan. My wife is also a, uh, in education. My wife is a teacher. And um, right now we are um, looking to see what, what uh, the, the future will hold for us as uh, um, the school system is still trying to figure out what's, what's going to happen in the fall. So, so that's my family. Um, it's four of us. Uh, we are a tight, um, wonderful. I love my family. We do th a lot of things together. Um, the other night, I'm sure many of you, uh, we have Disney Plus at home, and so we made sure that even in the midst of all the boxes everywhere, <clears throat> we had put our TV up, cleared that middle area, and was able to sit on the couch all together, all four of us together, and we watched Hamilton. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Pastor Albert, could you describe to us your growing up years, your parents and siblings, where you had grown up, and your early ambitions in life? That's a lot of questions. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so uh, I grew up, well, starting way back, and I'll actually share more of my story um, as, as 
you'll, he- you'll, you'll be able to hear a lot from me, and you'll hear a lot of our stories. But I grew up in Hawaii, uh, um, Hawaii, and I think I wrote this uh, for, for Pastor Gary to put in the connections uh, some months ago. Um, but, you know, a lot of people think Hawaii is a great place, uh, but growing up um, as a teenager on the island, it can be, well, you're on a rock. And so it felt claustrophobic. And so um, I, when, when it came time to, for my uh, teenage years, I went off to college uh, as far as I knew what, what uh, as far as I could, I, I knew at that time. And so that was the, on the other side of the United States from Hawaii to Pennsylvania. That's a 12-hour f- flight. I didn't realize how long that was until I started doing those travels. But um, that, that, that's my growing up years. Um, I have two older sisters, and my oldest one still lives in Hawaii. My second sister um, lives in Santa Monica. They've always said there's, when you grow up in Hawaii, uh, there's two types of people. Those who will never leave, and those who can't wait to get off the island. Well, I got off the island. My older sister stayed. Um, and so that's pretty much my growing up years until I went off to college in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, that my studies then, you asked about my early aspirations. The reason I went off to Pennsylvania was because I thought I was um, going to become an engineer. I love tinkering with stuff. I used to take apart everything, our, our home microwave oven, our home telephones, and all those things. Whether they worked after that, I had a, you know, <clears throat> that's a different story. But um, I thought I was going to become an engineer. But God had different plans for me w- once I went off to college. Sure. Tell us about your path to Camarillo UMC. My path to Camarillo. Um, I came up Arneo Drive, <laughs> turned left on Los. Um, well, uh, if, if you're talking about my appointments uh, leading up to Camarillo. My very first appointment, um, I was ordained in 99, and so, and my very first appointment was not too far from here. Um, It was at Woodland Hills United Methodist Church. So um, I did my first parts of my ministry in the San Fernando Valley, and then I gradually, the the bishops um, appointed me uh, further, further south. And so I served a couple of churches in, Orange County, uh, Fullerton United Methodist Church in Laguna Country. And then I went down further, and for the last 15 years, uh, I served churches in uh, San Diego. Uh, Ten years at San Diego first, and the last five years at La Mesa first. Um, I I did a lot of first UMCs. In fact, one of the funny things is that when I received my appointment letter from the cabinet, it's at Camarillo First United Methodist Church. I was like... Is this a first as well? Pastor Gary corrected us, like, no, they're just using a template. <laughs> what are the most challenging and rewarding parts of being a pastor? Well, the reward, the, let me start with the rewarding parts. The most rewarding parts of being a pastor is um, what it means to be a church. It's the people. It's getting to know people. It's walking with them through, the, through all of life. Um, that is the most rewarding parts of, of ministry. Um, I love being able to share with uh, folks the love of God, and, and especially w- w- um, when I teach Bible studies, and you can all see those light bulbs go off. That is just a pure joy. When someone understands how much they are loved and accepted by God, that is just pure joy. That, that's what thrives, um, uh, the, the passion that, that, that I, I live off of. The challenging part. <laughs> it's a 24-7 job. <laughs> uh, the, mo- the most challenging part of being a pastor is the fact that it's, it, it can be daunting. Um, and there are many times, in fact, um, there are many times when I find myself feeling, how am I supposed to do this? You know, you, um, you're placed into situations where um, life is turned upside down. And, you know, we're currently in one right now with the pandemic. And we ask, ask ourselves, what do we do? But those are the times when you just have to put your hands up, look up to God and say, Lord, help us. 
and God is always faithful. God has always been faithful in leading the way. So it's just a matter of trusting God. Amen. Thank you. What do you see as your priorities as a pastor in a local church? So as a pastor, um, I would say the, the, the main mission um, or the purpose of, of my job as a pastor is to lead the congregation in fulfilling the mission of the church, which is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the, for the transformation of the world. Now, great, you know, that can flow, off the, you know, flow from our, our mouths, but what does that mean? Well, in order to transform the world, uh, we first have to tra transform lives. And it's all about um, transforming lives. And it begins with having our lives, those within the church, really experience what I said earlier, um, that it, 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 have their lives transformed by, by knowing and fully realizing the love of God in their lives. And so when our lives are changed, when our lives are, 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 are um, transformed by God, then that leads us and moves us to transform the, the communities around us. And that's what I feel is uh, my primary role as a pastor, is to figure out a way in various times, and again, we are in some unusual times um, in the midst of all the challenges. How do we get this church to continue to um, show the community of Camarillo the love of God? This might be a repetition of the prior question, but this is more specific. Based on your initial assessment of our church, mm -hmm. what do you think would be your first priority in your ministry here? <laughs> so my initial assessment is basically two days in the office. <laughs> and um, my, my priority was, is to um, get things out of the boxes, unpack boxes. But um, from my two days in the office, what I uh, um, realize or recognize about Camarillo United Methodist Church is that um, even in the midst of a pandemic and a stay-at-home order, this is a busy place. Um, I don't know how, how Pastor Gary got any work done, but there's a lot of people that come through, um, which is great, which is great, because what that means is that this is a church that loves community. This is a church that loves to, to come together and, and it must be very painful not being able to come together, um, not being able to be here in, in, in the pews. And I'm very grateful for the, the staff parish leadership and, uh, and our staff that are here, because otherwise, it's a bunch of empty pews there. Um, and so I know that that is something that we are all longing. And so my initial, initial um, priority of work that needs to be done is, even in this pandemic, trying to figure out a way, trying to figure out a way uh, to make those connections still happen. Again, we are st still together and in spirit, but there is this longing, you know, um, as a church, we want to be together somehow. Now, still keeping in mind how to be safe and, and you know, be healthy, uh, figure out ways where we can uh, continue to build connections. How did the timing of this move being in the middle of a pandemic change how you approached it? Yeah, nobody saw this coming. Um, when, I, when, I, when I received the appointment call from the bishop's um, cabinet, uh, it was before the stay-at-home order. And in fact, um, staff parish knows that we, are, we were the last uh, introductory meeting face to face because after us everything was through Zoom. And so um, when, we, when I first got the call to come here, you know, we thought, okay, great, this is a great transition. It is a big move for me going from um, all the way in East County, San Diego, up to north of Los Angeles. In fact, when the call came, I said, where? <laughs> Where's Camarillo? Um, uh, and so it was going to be a big move anyhow. Well, with the pandemic, it became a lot harder, of course. Um, we're still trying to figure out which school um, my youngest son, Daniel, is going to go. We're it took us a while to figure, find a place to live. Um, 
uh, and we're still, my uh, Grace's job is still up in the air. So there's a lot of uncertainty there. And, um, but just how, as, you know, even though that, that, that's changing, that's different, what stays the same is what I said earlier, when these calls come in the midst of ministry, when we are faced with uncertainties, we lean upon what we know, which is get down on our knees, pray, and trust in God. In Bishop Hygieia's recent sermon, he mentioned how inspiration can be drawn from Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. Mm -hmm. I believe we can find God in many secular books. Do you have a favorite? Well, um, definitely yes. Uh, I believe that um, we can find God in all aspects of life um, because God is everywhere. Um, in terms of a spe specific secular book, you know, <laughs> I got to admit, most of my books are uh, theology books and church leadership books. I know it's not the most fun thing, but um, I do read secular books here and there. Uh, and the one book that that's among my favorite is a book uh, by James Surowiecki. Uh, it's called Wisdom of Crowds. And basically what he writes in, in that book is how um, uh, there's greater wisdom in a larger group of crowds of people than there are in an elite few uh, individuals, no matter how educated that may be. And it's, it's a fascinating read. Um, he's actually a, a, a writer for The New Yorker. And um, what that, where I find God in that is, is, is an affirmation that, that God works through all people, not just a few. The church is not just run by the pastor, right? We know that, right? Right? Um, it's run by everyone. And you know, in order to build the kingdom of God, it's not just a few. You know, God works to everyone to, to make, to transform the world. And so... Thank so, you. Yeah. It is said that Methodists love to sing their faith. <laughs> Do you have a favorite hymn, and why? Well, in the midst of this pandemic, every hymn, every song is a favorite right now. We, there's this longing to be able to sing, and yes, I do love to sing. I love, I love, gosh, do I have a favorite? Um, I love the good old um, traditional hymns like um, To God Be the Glory or um, love divine, all, all love ex uh, excelling. Those, those are some of my old traditional favorite hymns. Um, and I love some of the more contemporary um, songs. Uh, I love um, songs by um, Chris Tomlin and Matt Redman, uh, 10,000 Reasons. You know. uh, I, I love all sorts of songs. If there's one song, um, and it's more of a, a, a more modern song that I that, that I hold close to my heart. It's, it's a song by, um, the, the singer, her, her name is Laura Story, and it's called Blessings. And basically the song talks about how blessings sometimes come um, in hidden ways. And sometimes we understand God's blessing in our lives through the hardships, the heartaches, uh, the pains, the sleepless nights. It is when we go through times of challenge and struggle that we are able to recognize that God is there. And that song, in times of challenge, I always go back to that song. It's on my um, quick button um, on my car. Whenever I'm going places, I can just turn to that song. You guys got that over there? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like something for next week. Uh, what Bible story do you enjoy telling the most and why? Oh, there's so many great stories in the Bible. And there's so many stories in the Bible that are just like, really? <laughs> um, one of the, the stories in, in the Bible, um, if, 
one of the characters in the Bible that I love to tell stories of uh, the most is Peter. Um, I love to talk, tell about different uh, instances of Peter, primarily because of the fact that Peter is someone that we all know is uh, not highly you know, edu educated. Just no, no, no one would expect Peter to become the leader right, uh, of the church, the rock of the church, the first quote-unquote pope. Um, and, and to tell the story of how, he, uh, how God uses someone from the, the raw Peter to uh, become the leader, the one who on Pentecost Sunday stood up and started preaching um, to, to the crowd, that's, it's a great story. One of the stories uh, of Peter that um, I would share right now is um, that we all know that story, right? When uh, the disciples were on the boat and they're out at sea, and of course, you know, if you're always in the boat at out at sea at night, there's a, there's a storm, right? And so the disciples are scared, um, and Jesus was not with them at the time because, I don't know, what, Jesus was up, up to his own thing. Um, and then he comes walking on the water. And what does Peter do? Right? They all see, they, 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 they're not sure if it's Jesus, but when Jesus assures them that it is, it is him, uh, Peter says, well, let me come out to you. And he actually steps out of the boat. Now, granted, yes, he, he sank, like he took two steps and then started sinking. But the fact that he was willing to take that risk, the fact that he had his eyes focused on Jesus for that split moment, and to take that risk, um, step out of the sinking boat, that's a, a story of inspiration for me. And, and no matter and in many ways, the church is a boat, not that it's sinking, eh. um, but it's important for us to remember to keep our eyes on Jesus. Nice. Thank you. So uh, is there any other quick things that you want to say before we start the lightning round? <laughs> lightning round. <laughs> now I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, no, I just want to, first of all, uh, um, very glad and th thankful for the um, for the leadership of this church, uh, especially Luvi and Christy and Mark and, and, and Pam, um, uh, the staff uh, putting this first service together um, uh, so that I can get a feel for um, Camarillo um, before jumping in. And um, I'm, I'm sure you, some of you are eager to hear me preach next week and you, you'll get around to it. <laughs> um, so, but being able to experience and see uh, this church and the folks and get to know a little bit about this congregation is important for me because, um, you know, the message that I will be preaching will be for you, um, from God to you. And so it was important for me to just have this Sunday to just kind of be able to soak it in and get to know you first. And so I thank you. Thank you for all that. Okay, so just for fun, we've got our lightning <laughs> round here. Um, okay, so... I got uh, this very uh, yeah. frightened look underneath my right. mask. I was going to say, we're all <laughs> smiling under here. You can see that. Uh, coffee or tea? Coffee. Yes. Yeah! <laughs> that, that's a no-brainer. Tea. Oh, sorry, no. I I'll wasn't, drink tea, too. That, that wasn't in the script, sorry. Ice tea. <laughs> Crunchy or smooth peanut butter? Ooh. <laughs> hmm. Crunchy. Uh, this will uh, probably determine w whether you have a short or a long tenure here. Uh, Dodgers or Padres? Oh! Wow, well, you gotta say Dodgers, right? I started out up in LA, so. <laughs> okay, this one was a request from home. What is your favorite Veggie Tales episode? You know, it's been so long. <laughs> um, and I haven't really seen. Um, many of them, but it's, it's weird. It's one of those things that w when, you try, when you see those reruns, or, is it a weird that you always sort of only see the same episode <laughs> over and over? It's like, aren't there other episodes? But it's, it's, uh, it's like the spirit is saying, that's going to be your favorite. So it's the one with Jonah. Uh, that's, <laughs> that, that's the one that I always see. Jonah and the big fish. Yes. <laughs> Your favorite potluck dish? Anything. I eat 
anything <laughs> and everything. This is how I survived being a pastor. I can eat anything. <laughs> and name an instrument you play, and one that you wish you could play. Oh, uh, I play the guitar. And I, I, and I learned how to play the guitar back when I was in college, um, leading children and youth. And so I, I play the guitar, uh, I, I play praise songs uh, on the guitar uh, for, for that very reason. Uh, the, an instrument that I wish I learned. When I was younger, um, I'm sure many of us, our parents, have aspirations of us playing. And so I started off on the violin, um, stuck with that for a while. Uh, I, played the trombone for a bit, a little bit, I played in the band, I played uh, trombone, uh, um, uh, percussion. But the one instrument that I wish um, that I, uh, I learned to play is piano, because it's the most versatile. And um, there's a piano in every church, and I wish I could just go on. And I saw Pastor Gary's um, retirement video for annual coverage, and I was like, oh, he plays the piano. <laughs> so. My wife plays the piano. My son plays the piano. Um, my younger son also plays the French horn, so they play the piano for me. <laughs> and last, true or false, this bowl of Buckeyes from the Kisslers is worth about $50. Oh! <laughs> wow. What am I supposed to do with this? Is it a question? This is for you to take home. Hey, man! <laughs> Kissler, Kisslers? Kisslers. You will be receiving a thank you note from me. <laughs> So at this time, I would like to bring up uh, a welcoming group that has a few gifts for you and your family. Oh, I thought we were doing the uh, welcoming thing next so week. So the official welcoming <laughs> uh, liturgy will happen next week. So okay, please the, make sure the formal worship is next week. You could just come down this way, and All right. Dante and I can step out. So yes. Not traditional. Uh, we would have loved to have had a reception for right. you and your family. So we have uh, created some goodie bags and uh, a couple of gift cards for local restaurants. Oh, blessings. Curbside or outdoor dining. <laughs> and uh, we just want to welcome you on behalf of the church leadership and the staff. Thank you, Karen. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Food! <laughs> you know. Well, you're yes. <laughs> well, whether I'm packing or not, food! I, I, I love food, and so um, I am a Methodist in that sense. Thank you so much. Um, part, part of the welcoming package is also food um, <laughs> for thought, okay. and a gift from our church to you is this poem, which I would like to share with you, um, and it is entitled, For a New Home, by John O'Donohue, and home being Camarillo UMC. May this house shelter your life. When you come in home here, may all the weight of the world fall from your shoulders. May your heart be tranquil here. Blessed by peace the world cannot give. May this home be a lucky place where the graces your life desires always find the pathway to your door. May nothing destructive ever cross your threshold. May this be a safe place full of understanding and acceptance where you can be as you are without the need of any mask of pretense or image. May this home be a place of discovery where the possibilities that sleep in the clay of your soul can emerge to deepen and refine your vision for all that is yet to come to birth. May it be a house of courage where healing and growth are loved, where dignity and forgiveness prevail. A home where patience of spirit 
is prized and the site of the destination is never lost though the journey be difficult and slow may there be great delight around this hearth and cross and altar may it be a house of welcome for the broken and the diminished may you have the eyes to see that no visitor arrives without a gift and no guest leaves without a blessing welcome home pastor albert thank you connie thank you thank you all Yes, my family and I are very excited um, to be here, and we already, uh, on this first Sunday, I can tell that um, this is truly God's blessing uh, for us, and we look forward to many years of uh, church together, and even in this very awkward time, um, this uh, pandemic, we will still figure it out, figure out how to be a church um, that connects and spread God's love. And so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you. is given Jesus Christ his son give thanks with a grateful heart give thanks to the Holy One give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son Well, Camarillo and everyone else out there on the internet world watching in on, uh, on this uh, worship service, thank you. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for welcoming my family here at Camarillo United Methodist Church. I'm going to offer a word of prayer as we send, uh, um, uh, close the service. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Oh, gracious and loving God, we are truly grateful to you. We are grateful to you for opportunities in which you give to us, for new, new paths that lead us, that your, your Holy Spirit guides us in finding home. Lord, we pray that you will just continue to bless not only this church, but this community, that your spirit will be known, that, that, that you will be known through all, through, throughout this community because of the work and because of the ministries, because of your presence in our lives and in this church. Guide us, O oh God. May the days, weeks, months, years to come be a blessing. As your spirit lead us, may you continue to bless us, equip us to do your work, that there may be disciples upon disciples of your son Jesus Christ. It is in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and God bless.